this is a video that's kind of indicative of fish keeping in general where you have a lot of plans and ideas but then sometimes the reality of keeping a uh, living ecosystem uh, gets in the way of your best plans and it's also a video that goes all the way back I mean the the origins of this video go back to before episode 31 um, where if you recall in episode 31 I mentioned that in the tank behind me the blue cheek trigger blue throat trigger he jumped out and landed in the 700 gal refugium uh, that's underneath the 265 in wall behind me. Uh, my guess is that uh, it was probably the Indian black trigger given to the business and uh, he decided to take a jump for it. But luckily for him, his tank is situated over top of a very large uh, refugium. So he landed in there and he was fine. Um, but the problem is he decided to chew a hole in the liner uh, for the refugium. So that kind of created uh, the beginning of this video. So obviously that had to be fixed. But in the, in the middle of all this is, you know, we were trying to bring the 600 up and the 265 and get them full of corals. Uh, so as soon as I got into fixing the sump, I just got in a whole bunch of other stuff. And you'll see in this video, we're all over the place, but uh, we're getting the 1500 gallon system all ready to go in tip top shape. And uh, at the end of the video, I got a special uh, piece of equipment which I got which is gonna I think help me out with getting all these corals situated and a tiny little update on the double DIY builds all right here we go okay for anyone who saw episode 31 you know we have a leak in the uh, refugium sump for the 1500 gallon system compliments of my blue throat trigger uh, who has now been relocated uh, to the 600 gallon and as you can see the uh, the 1500 room is a mess everything is displaced we have buckets full of water and live rock everywhere. We still have a little more to go in there. Uh, and we have uh, anyone who keeps big fish tanks with big sumps, their best friend, the old sump pump. So it's time to go ahead and take that water all the way down to the bottom and uh, for me to hop in there and get the last of the critters and the last of the rock, get them in the last bucket, uh, get a few more of those over in the front as well, and get it all cleaned up and ready for the new liner. So we're just going to run the new liner over top of the existing liner and you might be thinking how are you going to get the new liner underneath an aquarium that's suspended over it well we're not we're gonna we're gonna screw it up you know we're, we're gonna connect the liner right to the top you know the water doesn't go anywhere near that high so uh it doesn't matter that uh we'll be making a hole in the liner at that height so what you know we'll screw in a washer and that'll tack it up because really all we have to do is just tack up the liner because the water pressure holds it in place so Nothing structural, just to keep it from flopping back down. That's all we're doing. Okay, back to work for me. All right, the water level is almost down. It's almost time to go in there and uh, get all the critters and the last few pieces of live rock out of there. Uh, I swear, I hope my next hundred videos are all just, hey, look how great the fish basement's doing, because these kind of videos, uh, they kind of suck. <laughs> I, gotta, I, gotta, I can't lie. It's, uh, it's not fun getting down there and doing this, but... Uh, got to get this system back and running oh my gosh all right time to dive in okay the liner is you know roughed in there and tacked up uh, you got to leave lots of uh extra liner so once the water gets in there it has room to push the liner around and then i'll get back in there and make sure there's no tight spots and try to massage it in uh the best i can once i have some water pressure uh, but for the meanwhile uh we got uh, 700 gallons of uh, water to fill up so uh it's gonna be a minute I'll be back. All right, we're uh, getting close. Uh, just mixing up 700 gallons of fresh water down there in the, uh, the huge sump and getting it back up to uh, temp with some hot water over top of the uh, you know relatively cool uh, well water that I have. Uh, and then of course, we need to get everything back out of these buckets and back in there. But uh, for now, we have a circulation pump that's uh, Mixing up that water, mixing up that salt, we'll get the salinity right, the temperature right, and then uh, we'll start to get the equipment back in and populating the sump back up. All right, you can see we got the sump fully working again. Uh, the water is clear, the whole system is running, the skimmer, the pumps, everything like that. And you can see all the live rock has been put back in. Uh, now one thing which I wasn't able to do yet is actually get sand to replenish the sand bed underneath the live rock and refugium. Uh, for some reason, the price of the, I like to use the HTH pool filter sand, 100% silica sand. I've used it forever in the saltwater side of the house, uh, and it's always worked great for me. Uh, and for some reason, the price on it went from $8.99 a bag to $22.99 $22 a bag. So I'm gonna see what I can do to get a, 
better price on that because I need a lot of bags. It's 700 gallons, you know, of uh, refugium. But, uh, so that's what you're seeing, but what you're probably not hearing is the whine uh, from the fans on the castles that I was using over this. And that's because it's turned off and they're being replaced with these new lights, uh, which are these guys up here. Um, tested them out on a, on a bucket with some live rock in it and they were doing the trick. So uh, I'm switching them out here. They are less wattage and they are passive cooling with no fans because I'm sure it bothers you guys on the video, but it drives me nuts, the fans just whining away every time I'm back here doing anything. So getting that fixed right now. So let me go ahead and install the rest of these. We'll see how it looks and then we'll jump around to the 600 gallon because lots of changes there. All right, be back in a minute. Okay, there we go. We've replaced the four 90 watt pendants with four 30 watt, more most importantly, passive cooling, no fans, uh, uh, mini floodlights. So obviously uh, it, it looks plenty bright. Um, like I said, I did test out, I took one of these lights and I suspended it um, four feet over a bucket with some of the live rock in here actually uh, those two pieces over there and uh, you can see their growth and then you can see the growth uh, that were underneath the light uh, the existing lights here and it's it almost seems like they have more so uh, all I really did was just uh, change the water I would pour the water from the bucket in here and take more out of here and put it in the bucket just so to feed the uh, the bacteria and, and the uh, algae with uh, alkalinity uh, calcium and then of course uh, breakdown for the fish you know ammonia and uh, foods for the bacteria so okay uh, a lot less lighting or cheaper lets me reuse those nicer castles for some fresh water tanks in the future and uh, less electricity which is always good so let's uh let's go check out the, what's going on with the 600 gallon reslope okay uh, last time we saw the 600 gallon reslope we were dealing uh, with water flow issues uh, we've always had the gyre in the back there which has done fine but we needed something on the front. And as you can see, I broke down. <laughs> There's the boxes here. Like I said, if you saw some uh, uh, Vortex on there, you know I broke down, paid the money and got uh, the pumps. I know do a, a bang up job of moving the water around. Uh, I was trying to get by with, with a less expensive solution, but uh, for this tank being so deep, front to back end deep uh, height wise, I just decided uh, to go ahead and go with what I know works really well, and these guys do work really well, and uh, they have solved uh, the water flow issues. Um, like I talked about in the other video though, I do want to bring the reef up some, so four feet deep tank, probably never built another one that deep. It's uh, It looks beautiful, but it's a, a real pain to work in, so I want to bring the reef up higher. I still want to create those big, you know, uh, cavities or avenues where the big fish can swim through there because some of these guys you know like the french angel and the queen and uh some of these tangs they're going to get very large so there needs to be a lot of swimming rooms but what i am going to do is i am going to bring up the reef in certain sections really high uh so as you can see there's some more marco rock down here i took some of the bigger pieces will go first and then i have some backup pieces uh to fill in and then whatever doesn't go in here uh, my assistant and I will put into uh, the refugium sump back behind the tank. So let's get these uh, let's get these in here and see what it looks like. All right, it is not easy finding pool filter silica sand in the middle of the winter. Apparently, people don't uh, <laughs> work on their pools in Maryland in the middle of the winter. But uh, let me show you why I've got all this sand. Let's go uh, take a look at the refugium. Okay, what a journey. So we had the leak uh, from the trigger, chewing a hole in the liner. Uh, we went through that, the hell of tearing all that out and fixing it. And uh, <clears throat> in the short term, I didn't have any sand, so I had to put the live rock back in because it was just in buckets out here. Uh, we put the new lights, but I really want to get the sand back in the Fugium. I noticed a large stabilizing difference having it. Uh, plus I like to have, uh, you know, basically the way everything works here is all the detritus flows down in here. And I like to have that sand bed for to have all the detritus, you know, sand sifters and everything. Let that uh, detritus stay down here and get consumed by those invertebrates. Uh, so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to grab the rocks with my grabbers, move them over, pour the sand in, put the rocks back. Uh, and then of course add the new uh, Marco rock that we have out there. So. Let me uh, jump into that and then uh, we'll take a look at the finished product. 
Okay, who can tell what the new rocks are? <laughs> yeah, they're that white, that bright. Uh, remember when the entire reef was like that? It wasn't that long ago, so uh, as kind of painful as it is seeing those guys sitting there right now, I know it will not be long until they're completely covered in coralline. Um, but the good news is they are achieving the desired effect. They are increasing uh, the, the height of the, of the reef in there and they're, they're creating what I wanted. So uh, short-term pain of letting the algae or the coralline algae grow back on these guys and making them look uh, like they belong uh, uh, for long-term gain of having the reef actually be how I want it to be. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna call it success. I'm happy with it. Uh, fish are a little, still a little spooked hanging down low in the tank since uh, I was in there messing around. They're kind of wondering what's going on. But uh, yeah, it won't be long before they'll be up there exploring and swimming through there. So it looks all good. Okay, it's been a day later and uh, yeah, they're still white, but uh, that's not what we're here looking at. We are looking at the sand that's in the refugium. See the stack is half as big as it was, so let's take a look. Okay, a slight difference in the 700 gallon refugium. We have lots of nice silica sand in there. Uh, so as you know, I moved the rocks over here, poured in the sand, moved the rocks over there, poured in the sand, and then put the rocks back over here. Uh, so again, this rock over here is actually going to a buddy of mine, a reef infidel, just been seeding it for him. So once that's moved to him, I'll go ahead and populate the rest of this with more uh, base rock and let it grow in. And man, does it ever get tired. I never get tired of not hearing those fans on the old lights. That passive cooling, that's the way to go. Uh, definitely for these refugians. I had definitely apologized at the beginning of the video that wine you probably heard, uh, that, that was driving me nuts. So at any rate, uh, we're gonna get the rest of the sand in here and get all the rock populated over here. And then once that's done, we'll get the, uh, some additional cleaning crew in here. Um, there is still some in here um, and they're propagating, but not all that there were originally. So we'll get that uh, built back up. All right, so what a marathon. We thought we were just uh, ready to put corals in the 600 gallon reef slope. And uh, you know, then a, a trigger happened. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, uh, it's awesome having a big tank suspended over a fugium and so you have to replace the liner, then it's pretty hellacious. But now that it's done, it's awesome again. And uh, I wanna build that refugium back up, obviously with rock. When well, we took a lot of rock out of there for Predator Bay, oh my God, what was that, 1,000 pounds of rock or something that used to be in there and in the 600 all moved to Predator Bay. So uh, yeah, we need to replenish that, build the system back up. But uh, I had to get the sand in first, had to make sure that the new liner held and all that, that everything was good before I pile back in hundreds and hundreds of pounds of rock. But now we're there. Um, so where are we at now with this tank? Uh, are we right back to just putting corals in? Not quite. I want to focus on the refugium and get some serious macroalgae going there, maybe some interesting invertebrates. Uh, we'll see, see what I can get a hold of, what I can source. Uh, and then we will get back to getting the reef corals uh, added to the, or corals added to the reef slope. Uh, but one thing I want to tell you, or I wanted to show you at the end of the video here is the piece of equipment, which is a PAR meter. So I thought about tacking it at the end of this video, but I want to take a whole video and go through all the tanks and check the par on all the tanks, the saltwater and the freshwater, and see what I'm dealing with. So before I go get any more corals, uh, so the ones the 150, they're doing the reef, uh, some, the <laughs> the uh, low tech reef. They're they're doing okay, um, but I would, I would say they're doing fine, but not great. You know, I really don't know what I'm working with with the par in terms of alkalinity, calcium, all those things. They do test out fine, and they're stable. And consistent uh, but I don't know where my lighting is at so that's we're gonna fix that with the uh, par meter that I just chopped on the floor <laughs> uh, but yeah we're gonna do it for all the tanks including the fresh water so then when we do with plants we'll know what we're dealing with as well uh, and we'll do a whole separate video on that and not only will we just take the par to the different tanks we'll sort of you know go through and explain how it works and if we're talking with the freshwater tank talk a little bit about you know what plants need how much par and we'll test different areas of the tank see how much it drops off uh, same thing with the uh, saltwater tanks. And lastly, Double DIY Builds Part 5. It's coming very soon. Uh, I wish I could show you the progress, but there's been serious progress. We're, we're right there. Uh, it's, 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 I'm pumped. It's going to be cool. <laughs> These tanks are going to be, if it's possible, you know, in my head, I've built them up to be pretty awesome. I think they might even be better than that <laughs> because as I look at them, as they get closer and closer to being done, you know, it's just, I'm just, wow, I can just 
totally picture it. In fact, I think what I might do is after part five, I think part five, you know, they'll be built, right? So a little giveaway there. We're gonna have some real tanks at part five, but then I think for each Aquascape and each tank going live, uh, probably do like a premiere for those. So we can launch the video, we can chat live, you know, in, in the chat uh, when the video goes up. So if you guys have any recommendations on the best day and time to do a premiere where, you know, it would be you know, most suitable for people to be able to watch it live with you, hit me up. Uh, definitely like to have as big a group on there as possible to, you know, discuss the video as it goes live, you know, yay or nay, you know, we'll, I'll live or die with, <laughs> with, uh, with it as, as it releases. So we'll see. Uh, just a thought, but uh, yeah, those are, those are some up and coming videos and uh, thanks for watching.